Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Right now we're at Odessa Security Forum. And join me now to talk about the security challenges Ukraine is currently facing is the advisor to the president of Ukraine on a volunteer basis on the national security and defense matters and former head of security service of Ukraine, Mr. Yuri Smyshko. Mr. Smyshko, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you. So, um, the most recent um, withdrawal of uh, Russian troops from uh, Syria, uh, does that mean that Ukraine should expect uh, the, um, the, the, the more fighting in the east of Ukraine? Does that mean that the uh, situation in, in the east will escalate? Uh, there isn't, I think, direct uh, connections with the withdrawal of Russian troops, uh, and by the way, this is quite a uh, modest amount of the troops uh, were withdrawn from uh, Syria. Uh, Russia still has uh, quite respected capacity over there. Uh, but of course, uh, Russia uh, would receive not, uh, let's say, enforcement with this small quantity of uh, uh, manpower and uh, aircrafts, jets, which return back. But Russia uh, will have more time. Uh, to get uh, be engaged in uh, Ukrainian affairs. Basically, Ukraine is back to square one. We, basically, uh, the, the, the world's attention is now focused on ISIS uh, in light of the most recent horrible attacks in Brussels. Everybody is, is, is focused there, so the, the attention is diverted from Russia, the attention is diverted from Ukraine, and, and, and Russia will basically uh, start meddling with Ukraine's affairs again. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, of course, uh, because uh, the goal of Russian Federation is the same, to become the world power, to stop the uh, uh, United uh, era project, go further to their border, uh, to uh, do their best to eliminate uh, the possibility of United States to be engaged in European affairs, and once again to show in Europe that uh, Russia is in charge what is going in. And uh, in this regard, until now, um, President Putin uh, makes success. We are supposed to acknowledge this. Russia doesn't have economic resources of the West. Uh, Russia seriously doesn't have uh, military uh, resources like the West. But uh, Russia has uh, authoritarian regime and decision-making process very short. And uh, I would say uh, President Putin all the time makes the first his step uh, with the white chess uh, figure and the West all the time uh, uh, opposite of this. And uh, to react, uh, democratic procedure, how to think. That is, I think for the West, the main uh, important thing right now, just to think, uh, do we have any strategy at all, common strategy toward uh, protection of Euro-Atlantic civilization toward reaction of the po um, attempts of Russia to destroy uh, these civilization capabilities to develop peacefully in new era. Uh, Russia has strategy. This is great Russia for any expense. And uh, to quit this danger, it's supposed to have strategy. And once again, uh, Kyiv and Ukraine, this is not beca because I'm Ukrainian, but uh, this is the largest uh, country in new era. This is uh, basically the country which already gave for all the world uh, uh, proof that we have developed civil society. Our civil society is pregnant for real democracy. Uh, twice this uh, civil society stopped dictatorship uh, uh, developing the country and the uh, Russian style. But we need uh, also the concept from the West, strategic concept. Uh, from success of democracy, uh, develop economy in Ukraine, it depends future not only the Euro-Atlantic civilization, especially in Europe, but also future of Russia. Can we talk a little bit about Ukraine's internal affairs? Uh, several weeks ago, uh, there was a leaked recording of the National Security and Defense Council meeting which took place uh, immediately um, after the, the end of the Euromaidan revolution. Uh, from, from which it was evident that uh, when the um, hostilities or um, the, the first green men appeared on the Crimean Peninsula and everybody thought that Ukraine militarily was not prepared to defend against these green men, 
it appeared that in reality Ukraine militarily could have protected itself. There was no will by the top leaders of the country at that point to go to, to use force against these green men. Do you think the events could have unfolded differently should the, uh, the, 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 the leaders at that point decided to, uh, to use military force against these green little men? I have told this even in April uh, of 2014, and my position is the same. If we would fight in Crimea, we wouldn't have the Donbass and Lugansk. Uh, moreover, these uh, rumors that we didn't have the forces and we didn't uh, army, this is uh, not true. Uh, first of all, uh, and the first, uh, I would say, even week maybe 12, uh, uh, two weeks, we have on Peninsula more forces than Russian had. Secondly, if you would just read um, interview recently, uh, which was uh, uh, given to the media, uh, Captain Zayats, commander of the special reconnaissance platoon of the special forces, um, this is air, uh, 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 Airborne uh, Brigade from Dnipropetrovsk, which stationed in those days basically two weeks uh, of event. Uh, his platoon was stationed over there. He, by the way, went back with armaments, with heavy armaments. Uh, they just resisted uh, very heavily. Uh, they attacked all provocators and uh, simply this platoon didn't receive uh, any order. Why and, do you uh, think this and, happens? And, and, and plus to this, when we are speaking, the, oh, there were a lot of traitors. Yes, we had traitors over there, but official number of forces which with uh, weapons left uh, uh, Crimea Peninsula and uh, came back on the mainland. This is 6,000 servicemen. Uh, how do you think in first uh, week when there was uh, a separatist-sized uh, parliament it's enough to have 6,000 loyal troops to just end uh, this coup d'etat uh, on the territory of the Nomad Republics. The problem is that the leadership which came after the second Maidan was completely unprepared uh, uh, for any actions. Among all of these leaders, uh, they're basically uh, not uh, those who served really in the army even without any military education, without any experience to work in the powerful ministers, uh, really uh, as the servicemen, I'm not speaking of political appointees for several months, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And all this protocol, for me, it was disaster. Mr. Sukhoi, my final question. In your opinion, why did that happen? Why did then leaders decided not to defend the territory of Ukraine? Was it lack of professionalism? or they just simply got scared? I think this is all of this together. First of all, they were professionals. They were all um, part of this political new so-called elite which Mr. Yushchenko brought into power. Unfortunately, 2004, the civil society, very developed civil society, stopped development of authoritarian regime. But to the power came those who were completely not uh, uh, prepared for running the country. I would say uh, inside there were the Bolsheviks, uh, populist Bolsheviks. They, five years of possible uh, creation democracy, they didn't do anything to create democracy. There was struggle inside them for the power, for the, uh, having access for the resources and so on. And this part of these um, basically political frictions which uh, already spoiled five years, they right now, of the second Maidan, they came to the power. And simply because uh, we didn't have another uh, opposition in the parliament, and they received the jumps once again uh, in their uh, hands, the victory which brought to them uh, By the people, uh, the people. Yes, they were not prepared for this. Secondly, they are not professionals. They were afraid and the businessly, they were very connected with the regime which left. And that is all the time we're supposed to look for the shoulder, uh, not to do anything uh, for the leakage of information about themselves. 
Yeah, it looks like some dark information there, Mrs. Mishkova. We'll definitely be following these developments really closely. Many thanks for finding the time to talk to us and Thank we you. look forward to talking to you in the future. We were discussing the national security matters of Ukraine and the challenges Ukraine is currently facing with the former chief of security service of Ukraine and current advisor to the president of Ukraine on national security and defense matters, Mr. Igor Smeshko. I'm Vladimir Solhub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.